Wavy Wayne is this cool guy. Um, no, I'm just joking. I'm actually Wavy Wayne, not that cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm a, a audio engineer. I got involved with audio engineering uh, because I was a, a rapper when I was young, and my mom was like, "Yeah, yeah, that's not a career." So, um, so I wanted to find a way to stay in music, and eventually, like, kind of followed my passion down audio engineering and uh, music production. Um, you know, I, that led me to teaching which took me to YouTube to share my knowledge and experience with the world. Um, so I am an artist first. Uh, I you know, had a lot of uh, content and stuff like that that just went viral and stuff like that. I got very lucky and blessed in my life early on, like I'd say in my 20s, I'm kind of old. Um, and uh, just from there, just started really getting into obviously my own artistry, but also writing a lot of music for TV and film uh, and really getting into the sync world, which is really fun. Um, and then obviously just from my music career, just kind of getting into more of teaching. Uh, I started to engineer out of necessity, uh, being that it was cheaper to do it yourself. So that's where my whole education started with the full sale, got my degree and, um, started to think, I don't know why I started to put a YouTube tutorials up of just all the knowledge that I had. And it, one thing led to another and just caught a second career, uh, just doing what I love. So I'm very lucky to have two passions and, um, that's who I am in a nutshell. Yo, I'm Eldre. Uh, I pretty much make chill beats for a living. Um, I'm a music producer, first artist. Uh, I kind of got into content creation because as a producer, it's usually like two lanes. You either try to get placements or sell beats, or you can go and like do the social media stuff and like become your own artist. So I took the artist route, um, and I started making YouTube videos, making beats, and then it just turned into like an audience of producers, which I wasn't really expecting. So then I got into tutorials and all that kind of stuff, and now I teach people pretty much how to achieve what I've achieved and stuff like that, but it's all just based on my prior experience. Nothing like, nothing too technical, but yeah, that's, that's what I do. This guy Jordan, I'm an artist first, engineer, and what brought me to YouTube was like, I used to work at the studio, decided to leave the studio, so I still wanted to be in music. So I want to be able to show people they can create, record at home, the highest quality without having to go to the studio, and that kind of led me to where I'm at now. So we'll start with YouTube music creation, um, you know, Times have changed now and you know you guys are doing a lot for the YouTube community, growing a community, growing an audio community. So from all your channels, I think we've, we've all learned some tips and tricks. What do you think will happen next for kind of content creation as a producer? I think it's really important. I think it's heading in a direction that I think a lot of people may not be privy to. Uh, I think a lot of companies uh, really don't see the impact or the value in what we do as of yet. But then there are those select companies, like Avid, for instance, that see the impact of what we have and, and what we're doing to the community from an audio side and making this a culture. You know, um, you know, there's a bunch of jokes that I can make in here about uh, Pro Tools or a DAW and only will get. You know what I mean? And that's a culture. So we're really taking, well, I'll speak for myself, I'm taking the time out to really capitalize on that and really make it more and just blow that up. And that's what I feel like it's heading towards where I think the influencer in our community is going to be a force to be reckoned with. And either I think companies are going to kind of figure that out early on or they're going to be very late to a party. So it's a really fun and interesting time because a lot of people are listening to the influencers, you know, that's in every industry. So why wouldn't it be in the audio industry? So, yeah. yeah. And I'll just add to that. I think that you know, we built our influence up based off of service, you know, and the service that we provide to people by putting our knowledge that, you know, we had, we all went to some type of audio school or put yeah. the time in, right? And it cost us time and money uh, to learn these things. And so by us bringing it to YouTube or whatever, any other platforms, um, it, it really is a service for people to like be able to go and capture that and, and, and understand a different way of working or just enhance their skills. So with that service that we provide comes the influence, right? Um, and, and so that's why I think that we are in this position today to where, yeah, you know, we're not the Bruce Swedeens of the, the world right now, but what we're doing is um, relating to people wherever they're at, whether they're in the bedroom or they're in a million dollar studio, you know, we have the knowledge that can translate to all of that. Yeah, and to add on to that, when it comes to the content, so if you're trying to be your own engineer producer, Creating content online will bring you clients and get to showcase your skills and opportunities to be able to work with companies that you love and to get brand deals and sponsorships like that. So you never know, you might be able to change your life with a couple of posts, but you'll never know unless you post it. Yeah. yeah. I'd say too that uh, pretty much what I see like things headed, you've already got like a lot of producer, influencer, engineers making their own plugins. So pretty soon it's just gonna be like 
we're all gonna be our own companies and stuff like that too. Just like the Mr. Beast with his all his different companies or like all these other YouTubers, they're making these huge companies that are like toppling other household companies. So I think it's gonna be the same thing. It's just a it's just new. Like it's yeah. the beginning. It's like the gold rush to me, like with this community, because it's like it's so new. The fact that I have a plug-in, like, as an indie creator, and, like, mm -hmm. he might be having one brew is insane. Like, that was impossible. Like, you know what I mean? That was unheard of. Indie audio plugins is not even a term, mm -hmm. but that's what's happening. Right. So, like he said, like, I think that the audience is going to continue to grow. I think a subscriber channel of 200,000 in the YouTube space is actually really a million. Because in the back of mind, that's a niche, niche audience, you know? So how many people are you really affecting? So I think that... There is a gold rush, like approaching, like with this entire thing that's going on. Yeah, and I was just going to add that I think there's content creation opportunities for all of us. You know, again, like kind of like what Sky was saying, like if I'm an audio engineer or a studio, I can make content that helps my potential customers. So if if, if I'm more trying to get more clients as artists, I can give them miking techniques or songwriting techniques, even if I'm an engineer, just to bring them in and offer them some value, and and also get them to know me, right? Hundred um, percent. How important is collaboration? So either with you know companies like Avid or kind of with your peers as well, with other YouTubers and collaborating and growing the community even more. How important is that to to you? Well, I'll jump in and say one thing. I think is super important on collaboration is like even just being able to share ideas, like being able to have the connection that I have with you and other people at Avid. It just helps us to be able to develop the best products so that we can do the best work. And then with us collaborating with each other, you know, sharing ideas, bouncing um, things off of each other, it just helps us to really like see and understand what the need of the market is and then find the best way to address it. I want to actually go back a little bit now and really touch on the first time you became, or when you realized you was an influencer or a YouTuber, when he was like, whoa, this video's done pretty well. What was you doing at that time? And kind of, when did you realize, wow, this is what I'm going to do kind of full time now? So for me, it was in 2015. I was, uh, like everybody else, I had a recorded studio, um, recording a bunch of people, doing my own music. And I posted a video on Facebook, showing my age, and it reached 50 million views and my life changed forever. And the way I knew it changed forever is when I walked into a restaurant with my mom, don't get emotional, and um, somebody, like the whole restaurant stopped. And I was with my mom, and everybody was coming up to us and playing a song at the restaurant. It was like, holy crap, like what's happening? And I just knew my life was changed forever, and it was. So at that moment, every post was, you know, intentional, everything just changed from there and my life just changed forever from music and stuff like that. So that was the clear cut. Wow. I, I was like, it's on, it's yeah. on now. For me, I, it was a little more gradual um, in my experience. I was already, I was teaching at a college, teaching recording and production and Pro Tools, obviously. Yep. And um, and I was, I owned a studio, a recording studio and, and I was posting content online. Again, part of the big part of why I started posting content online is because some of my students would, be missing class or coming in late or maybe they were just a little drowsy or something so they didn't get the <laughs> get the full lesson so um, I would record the lesson of the day and then put it up on YouTube hey take the link you can watch it later whatever you know and then I, other people start to see value in that um, eventually I stopped working at the school and then I'm like all right I'm gonna double down on making more videos bringing the full scope of what I would be teaching in the school to YouTube and, and just starting to do it that way. Um, so it was never like a huge like aha moment. Um, but you know, there was a moment when I got a first pair of headphones in the mail that somebody wanted me to review and I was like, I, I think I'm doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> For free? <laughs> exactly, and that was like some $60 headphones, but I was so excited. Look, I'm like, look, just send it. I'm gonna make the best video you ever saw. <laughs> and, uh, but to um, piggyback off you, it was like when I, finally felt like I've made it enough that I had a platform of voice is when I hit around like 10,000 subscribers. I was like, okay, I got something here. I hit 10K because I thought that was so impossible starting from zero. So it was like, then I started getting plug-in companies reaching out, microphone companies reaching out. They was like, we want you to review this, review this, and we'll pay you. And I was like, okay, so now I can make money from this. Similarly, it's like I was just doing like trying to sell beats and I didn't really like that so much. So when I started getting more into like the production side of things, doing music production content, at some point a few videos did well here and there. And then, you know, companies would reach out, but really it wasn't until like uh, I made my own drum kit and like it did really well. So I'm like, 
okay, you know, I'm working with a few companies here and there, you know, they're paying me a, a little bit of change. I released my own product and it was like kind of life changing. So that's really, that's, that was something for sure. Just hearing them stories is remarkable. So can we just get a massive round of applause? Cause that's, for our, that's hard work. And, and with, with that, like, you know, I am um, in all your comments, all of you guys' comments all the time. <laughs> but, and I see you guys reply a lot and you continue conversations and you, you know, how, how do you keep up with kind of the comments? It's definitely all about building a community, uh, building a trust with people. Like, I'm really here to help people. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's all I want to do. So, like, if you got a question, if I got time, like, I'm answering DMs, I'm answering questions in the comments. Yo, my, this not, I'm troubleshooting stuff for people with no expectations of anything else. I'm like, yo. I know it. It's gonna take me ten seconds to explain it to you. That'll save you an hour. Look, why not just da -da 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 -da, there? It is, um, and then just building that community even more, trying to offer um, more to to people. Like with the Wavy Seals Elite, basically what that is is um, it's a, a community that I built. That's all, it's like a private community to where we build each other up. It's a, it's like a mastermind. We um, listen to each other's mixes, give uh, creative feedback. I give like challenges uh, in the community. Create a lot of content not, i keep saying content but like what is content anyway i like i create educational stuff that um that is not posted on like you know main platforms that just help to take the education to a next level um you know because it's kind of like I, I have this thing to where like yes you, there is a lot of free stuff and i give away a lot of free stuff but like when you pay for something you pay attention a little more um, so like when it's really important, like, you know, I, I'm like, Hey, come just pay a little some, some, and you can really get this. Cause I want the people who are super serious, um, to, to get it and take it in. And then also you get me when you do that, you know? So, but when it comes to the comments, I like to treat every comment. Like I, I want to reply back to um like show that i appreciate the view because like most people they'll go around they'll be like y'all commented on this youtuber's page this youtuber's page nobody responded to me nobody wanted to help me so it's like to be like a voice for people that can't be heard and actually show attention interest in them that means a lot to me because i care more about the person watching versus just the view count yeah for me it's just uh <coughs> i like i just feel like a regular dude i don't feel like there's really anything extra special about me. I'm not like the most talented producer. I just so happen to have like some songs go viral on TikTok that changed my life or whatever. <laughs> but like I don't view myself as above anybody. So like I just reply like if, you know, unless it's negative. You know? I'd say just to kind of piggyback, you said something really profound to me. Like you said that, you know, you're in the comments and it's commenting back people because you're not above them. Like that's the same. I feel the same. Like when if I comment back, I know that might mean so much to someone and for that reason is just I, why I just want to be like normal in a sense of like, we could just have a conversation. I don't think I'm above you at all. Like, like you said, sometime I'll open the, that it'll be the right person to DM me at the right day, asking me the most random question. I'll be like, oh yeah, yada, yada. I'm having a genuine conversation. I'll get in a voice note and be like, oh bro, like this is good. Like, I think this is fine. They're like, okay, great. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. Like, and it's like, okay, cool. If you need anything, just, you know, just, just hit me. Like if I have the time to do it, then absolutely. These people are paying my bills. You know what I mean? Like that's how serious I take it. Like these people are feeding me. So if I can have just one conversation with that person, I'm with it. You know what I mean? Like it, it doesn't matter. For some reason, you 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 know you feed me, you watch my content, you you give me a life that I can enjoy with my family. So at the very least, I can have a comment back. You know, I'm not that guy. Like I'll follow I'll follow people. You know how some people just don't follow people back and stuff. Like you know, it's it's not that kind of game. And I just want to keep that my community like with a lot of integrity and just just be humble. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to feel that way. Like, hey, I'm just like you. I know where you're at, and I just want to relate to those people. So when you said that, I was like, yes. Like that's what I like about certain creators. They just not feel. They don't feel like they're above, you know, their audience and stuff like that. That's big for me. So how has the definition of success changed as technology and music culture has changed? Well, you don't need to have a Grammy or platinum plaques to be successful or or impactful. You know, I I think about it as, look. I, I'm, I might not know everything, but I know more than somebody else. So if I can just help somebody else who's not where I'm at get to where I'm at, then I've done them a service, right? Now there's somebody who can help take me from where I'm at to another level too, right? And so that I think, and that's what everybody, no matter where you are or what you do, you have something to offer. Somebody can learn from you. You have something to teach somebody. So 
just me knowing and understanding that, that just helps me to, um, you know, to say that, you know, think about success a lot differently. Yeah, because when I used to think about success, I was like, yo, I, I was chasing the numbers. It's like if I get 100K, that's what success looks like. But I'm like at the point now where if somebody DMs me like, yo, I, um, watching your videos help me get an in engineering job at a studio. You know, um, like somebody DM me not too long ago, they was like, I watched you record at home and that inspired me to start recording at home and now I got a record deal. Mm -hmm. So it's like that success to me and I wanna see more people get signed, do their own thing, like get their own studios and just do that, like that's success to me. Yeah, I don't let anyone uh, really put me down in that space at all because when I read my favorite comment to read, is when someone says, bro, you helped me so much in my music engineering career. Like, I learned everything from you, and I'm so much better. I have clients. I love that. Like, there's no greater comment. I don't care about it. Like, that comment is the comment. Like, that's what I do it for. Of course, of course, there's money involved. Of course, it's great to feed yourself. But at the same time, as far as having a job that's, like, fulfilling, you know what I mean, that you feel like you're actually helping people, like, that's... That's my favorite comment to read. When people are like, yo, you, you know, you see, laughing because you hear it, you see it all the time. It's like, you really helped me get from A to B and understand this stuff, and I appreciate it. And it's free. That's the crazy thing. You know what I mean? Like, it's all free content, and it's just nice that it's growing and people just find it helpful. We just want to subscribe. That, yeah, just the <laughs> algorithm yeah, loves that. that. You know, just keep it going. You know, just hit subscribe. Like, That's comment, subscribe, and share. That's yeah. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'll add on to that, too. It's kind of like, um, I feel like success in general should just be happiness. Um, and it's, it's, you know, the way this world is, it's like money, money, money. Mm -hmm. So, but for me, it's like, all right, I have certain goals and when I reach them, I feel good. Mm -hmm. But then it's kind of like, all right, what's next? So it's like, there's always something, something, something. So like with that, having like an impact on people and getting all the DMs and the comments and stuff of like actually chain, changing people's lives in meaningful ways, that's like, that's it for sure. Yeah. How does creating and producing music for YouTube differ to kind of creating and producing music as an independent artist or for yourself? Does it differ? Um, do you create the same way? Or now do you have an audience that you're creating for? For me personally, it hasn't really changed because I like to be myself in all of my videos. Like, if you see my video, that's what you get. Like, if you see me recording a country song over here, you might see me do a pop song over here. I'm trying, I'm always trying different things. So it's like, I don't ever really want to be boxed into something or this idea of who I am and what my channel is, is like I'm always experimenting. So it's like if you're trying to be a content creator and do music, you don't want to lose yourself in worrying about the content mm -hmm. and then you lose yourself and then you burn out, stop posting, stop creating and stop being uninspired. So it's like you just kind of want to be able to go wherever your creativity takes you. Yeah. And I told like you hit it right in the head because I say the same thing. I, I haven't changed my music style. Um, I literally just do what I do. and. Um, I chop that up to serve the internet. So it's like, for instance, my setup at home is ready to go 24 seven. Like my lights already set up, everything. So if I feel like I wanna create, I can literally turn on all the stuff, press record, and I'm in creation mode. And I'm just like, most of the time I'll start my video creating wise, like, hey, I'm just gonna make a beat. I'm just in the vibe. This is what I'm feeling like. This is what we're doing. And I'll do what I do. Whatever comes out, comes out. That's the content for the week. And then I'll chop that up to be interesting. You understand what I'm saying? Like I'll do it that way, but I'm not compromising the actual process, you know, everything is what it is, and this is it. I don't. I think that's why people gravitate to you because they can feel you're a real person, and you're really like like this. So I'm not compromising my music and my art for the internet, if that makes any sense. Now it's hard TikTok. We know the algorithms and stuff, but the core of it, I'm not compromising like the style and stuff like what I do for sure. Yeah, and that's one of the things I noticed, like me now, y'all. This whole week is like Wavy Wayne's the same person that I see in the videos. Facts. Devon's the same person I see in the videos. LJ, same You one. are you like, are to the you are more of the person. Same person. <laughs> the, uh, same yeah. person. Lo fi yes. beats, yes. very chill guy. Right. Like everything. So it's like yeah. that represents that shows a lot though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I was gonna say, like, I'll admit, like, it's definitely changed for me. Um again, I do lo fi music. I'm just a chill dude. Like I'm lazy, like I don't really <laughs> so like when it got into the content side of things, it definitely got to a point where like if you look at my past couple months of like the beats I've made, it's probably like three this month, four this month, when maybe before all the content grind, maybe 10, 20, 30, who knows how many beats I might make. So I've definitely gravitated towards like making more content than music, but on that end, I've kind of discovered like a passion for it, like the content and the business side of things. I kind of, not to say I like it more than making music, 
but I like it just enough to where if I don't make a certain amount of beats in a month, I don't really care as long as I got this X amount of things done. So, Devon, I'm going to go on to you for this question, actually. So um, you produce everything on Pro Tools. Every single thing. Let's talk about kind of your process and why you produce all on Pro Tools. So I was using uh, other DAWs uh, when I was at Full Sail. Uh, they expose you to a lot of different programs. And I got a chance to, you know, play around with stuff. Obviously, even before I went to Full Sail, Pro Tools was, was king at that time, as far as for me. Um, so over time, I started to really get into Logic, and I was producing a lot in Logic. And then I'd finish my beat, track out the stems, bring it into Pro Tools, sing a little, then go, oh, you know, I want to change that kick. Then go back into Logic, change the key. So quickly, I started to realize that that was disrupting my process. And I decided one day, I said, you know what? I know a lot of people don't do this, but I'm going to learn and figure out how to create a workflow for production for my beats and just my instrumentals in Pro Tools. So I literally do not have to ever leave the DAW. I don't have to bounce anything out. I can literally record a piano track, literally go right to melody. Then after that, go right to drums. Then go back to melody. Like That's how I work. It's really, I just reach for whatever feels right in the moment. So once I started to do that, and once I started to get it down pat, create my template um, in Pro Tools and stuff like that, that really worked for me, it was over. Like, I was like, there's literally, there's no reason in my workflow for me to move. Like, it just works. It's right there. I literally mix and master in the same session. After that, I organize it. I just don't like to move from session to session. Because a lot of times, if you're a producer and stuff like that, I always say, your, your music is going to wind up where? It's probably going to wind up in Pro Tools somewhere down the line. So I just want to be in that stream to easily just be able to move and just do it and stuff like that. And it's not hard, but it's really fun to do. And I, I you know, I implore anyone, if you watch any of my videos that I have on my Devon Toro channel, you'll be like, I'm flying through it, dude. It's, it's easier than people think, yeah. Now I wanna go into mobile creation a little bit. So as you've seen, we've had Pro Tools Sketch, um, yes. which is free, by the way, so. Let's <laughs> um, plug it in. But no, let's talk about Pro Tools Sketch for a second and mobile creation and, and where the industry's going because I think you know spending a couple of days with you guys and being on sketch and everything like that it is it's amazing you can just make music on the fly i just want to say <laughs> i was just so happy that pro tools took a step in the direction that i've been asking for for years just literally even if you haven't used sketch or, or you don't use sketch i just said to myself holy crap where you did something for me as a as a person that produces in the dog that's all I had for that, like in that moment. I was just happy to see a step in the right direction. And I hope that we continue going in that direction. Now, the uh, king of mobile production. Sky, <laughs> Sky Jordan, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> all right, so when it comes to the future of like mobile production, Pro Tools Sketch is definitely a step in the right direction for creators because it's so simple for you to make beats on the go because people are constantly on flights you know, so and it syncs with Pro Tools on the computer, but the future just overall of production is going towards iPhones and iPads because it's so easy to connect interfaces, microphones, and get the same quality as you would in any studio because you can connect analog gear to your phone to your iPad. It's so simple, and it's making music so accessible to people with quality. That way, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, where like the content, you're gonna have to have like some type of branding content to separate yourself from somebody else. So it's like, if you record an album and it sounds good, people are gonna be like, yo, where'd you record this? And you'd be like, on an iPad, people are gonna go nuts about it, because they're gonna be like, yo, there's no way you recorded this on an iPad. This cannot sound like this. And now that separates you from the other people. Yeah, I'm, and one thing I love about Sketch is that it's making music fun you know, uh, especially with Pro Tools, because how many people just open a Pro Tools session and say, this looks fun? <laughs> <laughs> me? <laughs> me? I mean, you know, <laughs> me? <laughs> For I the most it. part, it just doesn't, you know, look so sexy, right, in Pro Tools. But Sketch is just kind of different, where it does, it brings more of a fun <laughs> element to it. Like, even when I was experimenting with it, like, I'm with my three-year-old baby girl, and, like, we're touching stuff on the iPad, mm -hmm. and she's having fun, like, hearing the sounds and hearing it react. Like, she can't do that same thing, like, you know, with a full Pro Tools session. It's yeah. just not going to be as intuitive. But, like, being able to put that in her hands, and even at this age, it's going to open up to even younger generation, younger and younger, being able to access the, the um, tools. Yeah. Eldre, so someone who um, is about lo-fi and sounds and specific sonic selection, how do you feel about, because I know you did a video on kind of the piano itself, but how important was like the sound selection when you was going through Sketch? Yeah, I was actually like impressed because 
Well, like he's saying, just in general, like mobile beat making is kind of like the future. But, you know, like I started making beats on like GarageBand on my iPod, like way back then when they were making iPod touches and all that. And, you know, it kind of sounds like it's it was made on an iPod, you know? <laughs> so, like, with Sketch, I was in, like, the role, this sounds, like, really good. Like, yeah. some of my, like, two $300 plugins, it sounds like that on a free app on an iPad. So it's kind of like, you know, the, the, that's the future. I want to touch on a little bit about future of tech now in music creation and music production. So AI has mm. taken the world by storm um, and is, you know, affecting a lot of creative workflows as well. So how was... How has kind of your workflow changed? Um, and how do you approach making music or content uh, with AI? I mean, honestly, so far, my workflow has not changed at all mm. um, with AI. Uh, I look forward to the day when it does, right? Mm -hmm. um, I look forward to the day where I could load up some audio files and Pro Tools and hit the auto edit button and it'll automatically edit everything top to tail, all the clips for me, you know, in one swoop. You know, I look forward to that. I look forward to um, plugins talking to each other inside of the doll and without me having, you know, not not a side chain thing. Yeah, we know that. I'm like, pro plugins really talking to each other. So like, I'm looking forward to the possibilities of what AI can do. Honestly, I feel like it's just going to not people. Everybody thinks that yo, we're gonna lose our jobs and we're not gonna need to mix. Like, I, there's some AI mixing things on the internet. I tried them. None of them are good. Like, <laughs> so we got a long way. You know, all of us are safe. I'm, I'm, I'm sure, right? Um, but it's gonna help us to re remove, I think, a lot of the uh, tedious, monotonous tasks that go along with audio engineering, um, and just help us to be more creative by saving us that time. Even my business, I'm able to make a, a licensing agreement with companies on ChatGPT. You know, like that, like silly things like that. Like that, I would have to call my lawyer and pay four hundred dollars every time I pick up the phone. Um, but that changes. Like that's what AI does. I I can't not. And I, I just think that people just shouldn't get left behind. Like this thing is really powerful. It's here to stay. So mm -hmm. one thing I've always heard, and I hope I'm not misquoting Dave Pensado, he said, "In order to make modern music, you should use modern tools." You know. Yeah. So I'm a big proponent of that, and I'm not straying away from it. But Wavy's right from the music standpoint. I haven't been using it so much in the music side, but I welcome it. Like, I'm not shunning it. I don't think mm -hmm. it's bad. I think that some way down the line it's going to come in. But for right now, definitely in a creative visual side, it, it is, I am all in with it, for sure. Well, let it pick you off that, because, like, you haven't used it, like, in your music yet. Right. See, I've been experimenting with a lot of AI because a lot of companies hit me up with AI artists different vocals, artists, names. So I was experimenting, it's like I would record something, but I would always use like a harmony type plugin to give me harmonies. But I had an idea, I was like, hey, let me bounce out this acapella because all I have to do is upload mm -hmm. my vocals, and then the AI is gonna replicate everything that I sung, and I can pitch it down, I can pitch it up. Now I can have 15 unique voices on a harmony that a plugin can't give me. So it's something super unique. I'll add like, to the content side of things, like ugh, I've been using Chat GPT on everything, like, crazy. like, like well, coming yes. up with ideas for videos, coming up with outlines, because I've always been like with all my YouTube videos, just blabbering on, blabbering on, no script, and then me or my editor just has to cut out a bunch of BS, like just me talking crap, and uh, now I can just come up with like an outline, spit out some ideas, and then just follow the outline, or even like SEO stuff, with, like for my sample pack store, yeah. coming up with email marketing and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. when you're like a musician or like an independent artist or something, it's like there's so many hats you have to wear. And like marketing, people hate marketing. Like most most independent musicians probably don't like that aspect of it. But now you have like all these different AI tools that can just do that stuff for you or at least assist you heavily. Are there any are there other technologies that you're really excited about kind of in the, in the music production space? What are you excited about? It's really not even technology wise what I'm excited about. I'm excited for content for this community. Uh, because I think that the content for this community is going to get crazier and crazier. Mm -hmm. And it starts with these companies constantly investing in us to go do the crazy things. I'm not going to lie. Like, all the ideas that I personally have as far as shows that I think would be awesome for our niche as far as what we do, that comes with us continuously monetizing our stuff so that we can invest in that. And this, it's happening. It's slowly starting to happen. So I think I'm more excited for the content that is about to start happening. Uh as budgets and things start, people start, more companies start to realize, 
oh, let's go the influencer way. I think that's going to keep happening, keep pumping um, and helping us monetize things so we can do cooler things for our community and stuff like that. That's what I'm excited about. What are your next goals, steps, ambitions as a producer? So let's start with Eldre. Yeah. Okay, big question. Um, <laughs> no pressure. Let's see, let's see. Next goal. So I guess my next goal, honestly, is really to just not have goals and just just go with the flow for the rest of my life and just see what Low happens. No fi. No fi. But yeah, I mean, I am like excited. There's there's tons of things I always want to do. Um, I guess like, and I don't know if this is even on topic, but like for me, it's just like my next goal is just learning how to schedule myself properly. Like I struggle, I've been struggling with that my whole career recently, been getting a lot better at it, but it's just like, you know, got my hand in so many different things that like certain things would just start falling off. Cause once I focus on one thing, I'm focused on that. But like recently I've been downloading all these apps and stuff, like keeping me up to date with to-do lists and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know if that's a lame answer, but like, just like properly scheduling myself and having like a kind of like a schedule where it can start to feel autonomous of like what I do things. Uh, that's like my next goal for sure. Devon, yeah. as a producer, uh -huh. what are your next goals, steps, ambitions? I have two parts of that. Uh, one is, you know, I'm really getting serious with the plugin stuff. Um, I'm having a bunch of fun developing plugins. Uh, I had finally released my first plugin back in sometime this year, and it was just so successful. It was so fun to make. I love seeing people like, dude, like I use this on this song and this song. Like that was another part. I was like, maybe I'm getting passionate about this too. Like being creative with plugins and stuff like that. So I'm building that side of my business up, and I'm just having a good time with that. And then my other or my last part is literally, I want to get to a point in my life where. I do not need to post on social media. Like, I was just telling these guys, like, that is the ultimate success for me. Like, to, for me not to have to post anymore, I've done it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, not having to worry about social media, that would be the ultimate success for me, personally. So, that's what I'm shooting for. Uh, Wayne? Um, well, one thing, you know, shameless plug here. I have an a, a album, the Adobe Atmos mixed album that I mixed in Adobe Atmos, my first, that is actually um, in consideration right now for anybody that's a Grammy, um, part of the Grammy family, you know, please go vote for it. It's called Campan. The artist, his name is Double A. Um, so, Congrats, man. Come yes, up please check my time. IG Woo! if you want. Big deal, bro. Yeah. Big deal. <laughs> So it's up for consideration right now to get you know on the on the ballot for um for the Grammys and um, I would love to do that to as an influencer right to bring that and show and also just validate for everybody who's been following what I've been doing and, and everything to bring that home for us um, to put that stamp on it. I'm also I'm just huge also on education. Um, so you know coming down the pipeline more I have more courses. I have, you know, official certification uh, courses through Avid, right? So you can tap in with Wavy Wayne and get certified in a fun way, right? And I, you know, it's going to, I got the uh, Pro Tools 101, the 110, the 200 series, the Adobe Atmos certifications, all, you know, that I'm offering and I'm constantly developing more uh, educational outlets because I'm, I'm a serious educator. So, um, and, and also, you know, one last thing I'm building up is uh, a pro audio retail store. As I know, we was all talking about, you know, different things that we're doing. I've been building this baby for the last two years um, with my partner, Xavier, and um, it's live right now. Uh, we did like a soft launch a couple months ago, but wavyproaudio.com is a, a site where you can go and find all of your pro audio needs, um, your pro audio plug. So that's my, my kind of goals and my outlooks is to keep building up those things, keep pouring into education, and keep finding ways to um, expand the, the whole brand. Yeah. It's wild to see that. Bro. My answer sucked, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and also uh, schedule myself. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just big regret right now. <laughs> <laughs> what advice do you have for new creators in the music space? So those who want to get out and start producing music, you know, creating, maybe engineering themselves and what advice do you have for them? Uh, <laughs> don't don't hey, do it. No, don't be scared. Well, why should they learn Pro Tools? Said uh, who? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not nah, like if you want to get into content and stuff like that, you can't be scared of negativity. People are always going to try to nitpick at you for actually trying to do something. So if you post, you mixing a song and somebody's like, yo, this is horrible. Why would you ever do this? Be like, eh, look at it. Be like, do they have points or is it just hate? Because most people that leave hate comments, they wish that they could do what you were doing. Mm -hmm. So like, that's just one thing about content. And don't expect to get famous off your first 10, 50, 100 uploads because it's probably going to take a while. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, 
Well, well, I forgot what the question was, but I had a really good answer. Oh, oh. here it is. <laughs> um, okay, so, all right. So, G also, he like, like, why should we use Pro Tools? So, basically, like, for me, I never, I didn't think of myself as being, like, super talented when I um, jumped into, like, recording and mixing, like, as an audio engineer. And I knew that, like, to be a mix engineer, you, you kind of needed some talent. You needed something special. To be a producer or an artist like y'all, like, you needed some, like, talent, right? And I'm like, well, what can I do that doesn't necessarily require talent? <laughs> I can learn how to use Pro Tools, mm. right? I can read the manual. I can study this. I can practice it. And so just by learning to get better at the tools than anybody else, that put me in a position to where I might not have had the talent at that time, but I had the skills. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that honing your skills will fill in the gaps where your talent may fall off. Um, my suggestion would be, and this is what I tell my friends all the time, just do it, you know, like stop thinking. Because I get so many friends that get so wrapped up in, is it perfect, this and that, gotta be this date, this time. You ha you st you're at zero, right? You're starting from the beginning, just do it. You know, don't get co so caught up in being a perfectionist, which we all are, I'm sure, in this room. It'll never be perfect. I can play your old music, and I promise where you'll cringe or you'll find a mistake, right? So what I try to tell everyone is just put it out. Like, just do it. It's sitting on your hard drive. It's, you're, it's wasting time. It's not doing anything. Put it out. It's horrible? Fine. Let's figure it out, you know? Like, I always tell people, like... When you put it out, the first song I put out, let me know what the second song was going to be. The second song, let me know what the third, the fourth, et cetera. And that's because I was seeing what worked and what do, what didn't. I'm throwing paint at a wall. So put it out. Like, I know everyone has something sitting on some drive somewhere that's just like, it's just been there like, oh, this is a song from three months ago. Put it out. It'll never be perfect. Let the audience decide for themselves and let that audience come to you. And let the people that want to hear your music find you. And that's it. So I say, just do it. Whatever you're trying to do, just do it. Please put it out. Just to add to that, like, like I said, I do the education. Definitely not as serious as this guy. <laughs> but like, uh, because I, I just personally feel like I just don't have all the know-how. But what I do teach people is just what I've done, and so it's like you can't replicate my success. Like, you know, I went viral on all these different platforms, but I just say like my advice is just, and it's so like it's such a cliche, but like I feel like the main difference for me and like someone else is just I didn't give up. And it's so simple, but like you don't really realize that that's the truth until you've made it. Maybe that's what it is. But it's literally just like, like he said, just do it and then just don't give up. That's yeah. technically it. Obviously, you want to throw in consistency and all that. But I feel like I'm only I reach my level of success because I didn't give up. That's it. That's honestly. Well, 100% agree with you. And I wanted to a lot, by the way. <laughs> yeah, facts. <laughs> that part. Um, so I want to go on to kind of as producers, let's say, um, how do you support each other in kind of achieving your ambitions and kind of completing your goals? Well, I talk to these guys about content here and there, you know, like I'll see what Sky is doing and we'll talk about click through rates. You know, we'll talk about thumbnails. We'll talk about, you know, what what kind of content is working? Why is the long form content working for you? Why is the short? If something cracks for one of them, I'm just like studying, right? And I can I know I'm comfortable enough to reach out to them like, yo, bro, that was dope. Like, what did you yada yada? Like, I know because I've we we know we own we're very early in each other's lives for the most part, and like kind of building that type of relationship. But nonetheless, I am not afraid to hit them and ask them a question. You know, as far as like, yo, that worked for you. Why did that work for you? Just like I have a podcast, and I don't shun anyone in the audio community that builds another podcast. It is not competition. I want to keep the conversation going because when people start seeing more podcasts pop up, guess what? Now it becomes a thing and maybe more people invest in them. So I encourage like anybody that needs any question from me, like what's up, what you need? Like I'm not hiding anything. I think a lot of us, we're super not gatekeepers. All we do is give things for free all day. So that's important to me as far as everything is concerned. Just like kind of just like you know, I pick your brain, man. Let's talk about yeah. click-through rates and thumbnails. Like, like, <laughs> And, like, when it comes to his podcast, like, I reached out to him, like, a couple weeks ago, and I was like, would you be okay with me reacting and giving my thoughts on certain clips from your podcast? Because that's going to help grow the community because we share a similar audience, and they'll see the camaraderie between the both of us. And then, like, if me and Wavy Wayne collab on something, that's going to show the camaraderie, and that's going to build this community because his people are going to come over here, his people are going to come over here, and we're all going to intertwine. Yeah. And same with him. I was like, if you send me beats, you're in the lo-fi community. If I do record a song to one of his lo-fi beats, that puts me into a whole niche of people that don't even know who I am. Exactly. 
Yeah, it's best. It, we we're stronger together, to be honest. Like yeah. seriously, like even from a business standpoint, you know, it's just we're just stronger together if we work together, way stronger together. Yeah, and I said like creating um, a mastermind. That's something I talked to you guys about, like getting on a group text, like sharing ideas if anybody got questions or anything like that. And this is something I already do, like with my engineering friends, you know, outside of you know YouTubers, you know, it's just we talk to each other, we share tips, we share ideas, like we meet up and mix records together like you know so it's not a bubble and that's one thing why the wavy seals elite comes into play um but it's, again it's my my community that i bring people together because a lot of us are like in our bedrooms or whatever watching and learning completely from online sources you don't got nobody to bounce the ideas off of you don't have nobody to correct you if you go to the left right you and that's why we got so much crappy music out here is because everybody's making it nobody heard it until it was out on apple music and it's like <laughs> one of your friends could have stopped you you know like it could have happened like that <laughs> um so like building that community around you of people and not just like your mom who's going to pat you on the back all the time but people who really are going to help you to sharpen your axe like you know and say hey you know this is the way we could do it this is how we can do it better and really have some good ideas together create that for yourself so wherever you at whatever it is that you're into find four or five people that are on that same path get a text group going and text each other every day we do have some time for some questions. Sure. Um, so does anyone have any questions? We have a few. Yes. Yeah. Great question. You guys kind of talked about it already, but um, the migration towards long-form content into short-form content and how that has kind of evolutionized throughout YouTube uh, throughout the past couple of years, how has that impacted your uh, content creation, the way you think about it? Um, how have you involved Pro Tools in it? And uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so for me, I do a podcast, right? And that's that I would consider that long form because sometimes it could be an hour long. Uh, the reason why I really jumped into the podcast is because I can now have and shoot with my friends for one hour, and that turns into 14 different clips. So now I'm taking that long form content, and that's two weeks worth of content. You know what I mean? So I've figured out in my workflow as far as like, yo, we can sit, do four episodes, and I'm good for the month on content. Anything after that is just extra. So I found like that nice little hybrid in between of like, we'll do long form, but that long form also works amazing in short form burst. So that's how I've worked it into my lifestyle where it's like, I can't do this every single week, you know what I mean? Like doing an episode. So I was like, hey, let's just bulk record. And then my month is done. Hand it over to the editor, I'm done. Like, I, And those clips just pop, 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 pop every single day, fresh new content. So. That's my strategy as of right now is podcasting. Is That's why I've been suggesting to people. Podcasting can make your life. It's just a, and it's quality content. It's not like it's diluted. It's really quality content. So that's what I'm doing right now. Like that's helped a lot. Yeah. yeah. For me, I, I, I've started a thing I do um, periodically called quick little tutorials. You know, it's like literally me for a minute giving a quick little tutorial. Um, and, and I think that's beneficial because a lot of times, like if we searching for someone trying to solve a problem, those quick little things like it, I don't want it to take 10 minutes for me to solve this problem because I'm in the middle of working right now and if I could get it in 30 seconds or one minute there's a lot of opportunity to help somebody there so um, that's I like to look for those moments where I can explain this in, in 30 seconds I can explain this in one minute and make a short or make a real and then let that be the, the content so thinking about those little bits like what's the thing like you know um, how to import audio and Pro Tools. I can yeah. explain that in 30 seconds, right? I don't need a 10 minute video to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, the long form content works as well because I can make a how to import audio and Pro Tools a short form, and then, but I could also talk about it for 20 minutes because there's so many different ways and so many different settings and stuff that could change the way the audio is being imported. So I could go in depth and make that long form and then also just give you the, hey, here's how to so quickly solve your problem. Yeah. And then add on to that, like the new feature when it comes to YouTube Shorts, you can now link your long form video mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to the short. So if the long term video doesn't really do right, the short might jump off, and that drives extra traffic back to your original content. Yeah. And I would say, like, I'm a personal believer of like long form content is like the best way to like. It's just I feel like it's with longevity wise, long term, yeah. long form content is the best. Like for me, with obviously like. TikTok just came out of nowhere and changed my life because of some songs that went viral. 
But like I kept I stuck with the YouTube stuff no matter what was going on because I just know that over time, like that's always gonna be there. And just longer form content, that's how you actually build a connection with like the audience. Nobody who who follows people on TikTok, it's just for you pay swiping, swiping, swiping. Right. You don't really care to like follow them as a person yeah. as much as you do with like long form. Yeah. And that's why I think YouTube is probably like the hardest platform to build on. Because you build on YouTube, you're good. Like you can really make a living. Like like if you got something on YouTube, you can really make a living. TikTok, it's kind of fleeting. You know that fan base is very fleeting. You know, um, but YouTube, you build it, it you're good, man. Like I'll be honest with you, if you keep up with it, you're good. So I definitely highly recommend the YouTube space. Like when it comes to like life long longevity, when it comes to stuff and stuff like that. Perfect. Do we have any one more? One more? Yep. Uh, what are some common mistakes you see with content that people are making that maybe makes the content unsuccessful? Just not being genuine, you know? I think when people are trying to sell something, like, like off rip, I think that's where you lose me. Um, for instance, I know some YouTubers uh, that have, uh, excuse my language, have pissed me off, right? Because they'll take my video, right? And they'll say, stop looking at videos like this. <laughs> And check out this. What I do is, I do this and it's like, wow, you literally put me down to sell your product. Mm -hmm. And I think that, and for that, like, you know, if I share that with them, it's like, we're, I'm done with this guy. Like, I don't really like this guy. You know what I mean? Like, that's not cool. So I think that's like the biggest mistake, thinking that you're gonna build something on top of putting someone else down. Such a simple schoolyard uh, thing, but it does happen. You know, I've seen plenty of people use my content and say, this guy, huh, wrong. But my $30,000 class, best thing in the world. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm giving it for free, you know? So I don't like when people try to sell off rip as opposed to give them value, build the trust. Build the trust, the value will come. Don't worry about selling anything, just build the trust first. Once they trust you and they love you, hey, I got this little keychain for $5. Oh my God, she's giving me a keychain. You know what I mean? Like that happens. Build the trust with the audience first is what I think is the biggest mistake people don't make. Well, don't do. Yeah. One thing I, is people don't get to the point quick enough. Um, that, in that, oh content. my God. Like, um, if I'm, it's my first time coming to your channel or whatever, because I'm trying to solve a problem, I don't care about you. I don't care about none of that stuff. Like, I just don't. Like, I just, please, solve my problem. And then if you want to talk about yourself later in the video, do that. But solve my problem first or make it to where, hey, there's chapters down here where you can point to exactly where your problem is going to be solved. And then you can jump to that. Like, I don't want the 10-minute intro about all of this. Like, no, like, solve the problem first and then move on. Yeah. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. The intros definitely kill me. And but one thing worse than like a too long of an intro is gonna be the audio. So it's like if I'm watching a video and the audio is horrible, I'm finna go on to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And like that's one of the biggest things for me personally. Yeah, yeah I'd say uh, one thing that I've struggled with. So like I'm talking from experience. It's just like trying to do too much. So it's like niche or niche I don't, I don't know but uh but like it really does help and and it helps for everybody that's watching you to kind of and it's kind of unfortunate for some people but like doing the same thing over and over again is kind of like the way to grow fast obviously like once you build an audience or whatever you can start branching out but it's like you see like someone cooking on tiktok and it's a really good video you go to their page for more recipes and they're like playing video games you're gonna be like oh what the hell i wanted more cooking videos mm -hmm. So like, and everybody like as creatives wants to do so many things, but that's why like for me, I just kind of stuck with lo-fi. Like I like that, so I just stuck with it. So even if I'm doing different types of things within lo-fi, at least like the common denominator is like the genre. And I try to stick with that as much as I can. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. First of all, um, I just want to say a massive thank you to Jungle City Studios and all the team behind this as well, because we're in an iconic studio right now. For sure. Um, and I think it's just amazing. And so much hard work went into kind of this this panel today as well. I hope everyone's had, had fun and learned something. And um, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> For sure. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate you.